The newest installment in the Call of Duty series is fast approaching this October, but did you even know about it? You'd be forgiven for not realizing it, because for how big this franchise is, there's been surprisingly little talk about it. So why is that? Is this long-thriving franchise finally on the way out? Has the competition caught up to them? Today, we'll look into why nobody is talking about the new Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2. Is it just a matter of being too samey? While the modern titles are definitely a little different from their counterparts of yesteryear, even the most ardent Call of Duty fan would probably agree that during the franchise's halcyon days of relevance, they became a little, let's say, complacent. They garnered a reputation for cranking out a new game every year, usually with only minor changes than the last, which brought upon the obvious jokes about buying the same game over and over. They were often compared to the Madden series in this regard, but at least there you have the built-in excuse of updating the rosters for each season. There's comparatively little reason to have a World War I or World War II simulator release annually, aside from the fact that people always bought it, of course. And for those who may not have been in the loop for some time, you may be surprised to know that they've never actually broken that streak of putting out one game per year. Yeah, they've kept that up since 2005. No joke. Well, okay, that's counting a big DLC campaign as their representation in 2020, but I think we can all agree that 2020 is fair to exclude from these streaks anyway. Still, even I didn't realize that before working on this video. I thought for sure they had taken a break at some point. Silly me. So, do they simply come out too quickly? One year is really not enough time to make a AAA title. In fact, it's not much time to make any sort of game. It only stands to reason that they'd have to try and build off previous games, and you can't really overhaul much in that time frame either, so changes would be iterative. No one game would feel drastically different than the next, and that's the hole that Call of Duty seemed to be digging for itself. Little fun fact for you on the subject of these Madden comparisons, up until a few years ago, there was a hard cap on how many points you could score. Trying to go beyond 255 would crash the game, because the code they used for scoreboards hadn't changed since the N64 days, a stark sign of just how deep-rooted these kinds of issues can be. That reputation has definitely diminished COD's image with many gamers for years, but that alone isn't the only issue with annual releases. There's a simple matter of burnout for your audience. The same person can only get the same game so many times if they're still enjoying your last title, since, you know, it's barely a year old and people often replay their favorite games over and over for decades. Is there really so much incentive to spend money on the next one? Well, mm, not in theory, no. In addition, the title probably isn't helping matters. This might seem like a minor nitpick, but I don't think so. The title of a given media is pretty significant. It can influence the feeling one has for a game or a movie or book any time it's brought up, and the practice of reusing old titles is one of the more baffling trends in modern entertainment. Suddenly, there's two movies called Ghostbusters and the Ghostbusters franchise, and you have to specify what year they came out when you're looking them up. Now it seems Call of Duty, already somewhat famous for its particular brand of game titles, is falling into that trap as well, outright reusing the Modern Warfare branding. At least with the first one, it was originally called Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, which made it a little bit distinct from the 2019 game in retrospect. But now, the only difference the upcoming title has to the 2009 Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is that they're, uh, using a Roman numeral for the 2 now? Uh, are you serious? Honestly, whenever I say the title of this game, it doesn't even feel like I'm talking about a brand new game. It feels like I'm talking about a game that's been out for years. Oh, hold on, sensing a pattern emerging here. It feels like we keep looping around to the same point, doesn't it? Well, let's tackle a different issue now then. Is it a case of the competition catching up? For a brief period of time, the demand for FPS games greatly outweighed the supply. Call of Duty was the benefactor of being the hot new thing right at the boom period for the genre, and it took a little while for people to catch up to them. Those that tried got the dreaded mark of being a Call of Duty clone rather than a competitor, as is often the case with newly emerging genres. That helped them stay on top of the mountain for some time, but it's fair to say that we're dealing with a very different gaming landscape these days. There's many more FPS franchises that have become accepted as mainstays now, so COD has nothing remote remotely resembling a monopoly on the style. It only stands to reason that this would eat into the sales of the franchise little by little, with each new alternative luring some would-be fans away from the purchase, as well as taking up time as the center of attention. Among these competitors, you have hero shooters like Overwatch redefining the genre a bit, adding more color and character, which can make the dreary wartime shooters look bland in comparison. And even in their own genre, new heavy hitters like EA's Battlefield have emerged to further take some of their market share. This isn't even getting into the fact that FPS games are so much the new hotness anymore, with the new modern Battle Royale games arguably taking their place in the public consciousness. And while yes, the Call of Duty franchise has attempted to cash in on this craze as well, they serve as a stark lesson in the difference between being at the forefront of a boom and simply trying to catch up to it after the fact. They were on the other side of the coin before, not so much these days. So then, sales must be declining, right? Aha! Well, that's the funny thing about all this. Uh, the short answer is no. No, they really aren't. Some select titles may have been considered disappointments 
performance by their standards, but the first Modern Warfare installment, er, that is to say the first modern Modern Warfare installment, er, the 2019 one, we're talking about the 2019 one. Anyway, that one broke a lot of sales records, reportedly earned over a billion dollars in about two months, and yes, that's billion with a B, and within a year of its release, it had sold over 30 million copies across all platforms. That is a staggering success by literally anybody's standards. The sequel might well taper off a little from that, but what would that even mean? Even if it literally sells half of what its predecessor sold, oh no, half a billion dollars for the holiday season? What a travesty, and therein lies the rub. While Call of Duty may not be hot on the lips of big-time content creators and streamers in the way that other games are, while it may not feel like the massive, hyper-relevant franchise that it used to be, make no mistake, it's still an absolutely astronomically enormous franchise. And that's why all of the issues we've talked about today are more than likely never going to be addressed in any serious way. Are they irrelevant? Have we just wasted all our time talking about all this? Well, maybe not. One could argue that if COD developers were to slow down, spend extra time on making a wholly new experience, and maybe even give people some time to miss them, they could become bigger than ever. Maybe figure out some ways to modernize and get people talking about and sharing your game in the same way that people do with Fortnite and other such modern viral hits, and you'll tap into an even wider audience. Since obviously there's huge separate gaming worlds here, and COD is strictly on the side of the one that doesn't like to talk about games on the internet too much. But while they could do these things, and maybe they would pay off long term, there's no guarantee of that, nor is there any guarantee that they would make back the money they'd theoretically miss out on by skipping a few years. So, it's unlikely they'll ever change their strategy in any major way. But is there a silver lining to be had here? A positive, hopeful note to go out on? Uh, nope, not really. Capitalism wins again. See you next year. And that's all we have time for today. Did you enjoy the video? Are you excited for the new Call of Duty, regardless of what the rest of the world thinks? Are there any other upcoming video game releases that you'd like to see us tackle in the same vein as this one? Be sure to let us know down in the comments below, and until next time, thanks for watching.